Thank you for tuning in to watch the Westwood High School freshman presentation for the class of 2024. First, let's start with who are your counselors? So counselors are broken down by students' last names. So for example, if your last name starts with something between A and C-H-E-Q, your counselor will be Ms. Kateris. And then you'll work your way down the other counselors to see where is your last name and who is your counselor based off of that. Eventually, if you continue with the IB program, your 11th and 12th grade year, you will transition to Ms. Castro. However, she will not be your counselor until the start of junior year. And again, that would only be if you're in the IB program. The other counselors below are going to be your support counselors and their little duties are listed right next to their name. So please make sure if you have any questions, ask your alpha counselor first. They are gonna be your point person when contacting the school. Next thing I wanna do is go through the counseling website. The counseling website which is listed right here, you can access it from the front of the Westwood website as well, is gonna be an invaluable resource tool for the next four years. So uh, down the front center is gonna be more the blog style, where this is where new information will be posted. Versus on the right, this is where we're gonna have some different pages that'll have valuable information for you. So for example, the top one, virtual course selection. This is where you can access our choice sheets. So for the 9th through 11th grade choice sheet, you will eventually get to use later this year to pick your courses. You will see, if you click on it, all your courses that are going to be offered are listed here. And the nice thing is, is if you click on any class, it's going to take you to a detailed information sheet that will tell you exactly what to expect in that class. There's some other great resources here, course catalogs, for your plan, videos and handouts. All of this stuff is going to be great for later this year. You will also see there's a mental health resource tab. We've got lots of great local resources for you and your family that you can access right here. If you're thinking you eventually might wanna take an ACC class, we've got lots of information already listed that you could look and read about. The career assessment and exploration tab has so many great resources. These are lots of different tests you can take that'll help you decide maybe what you wanna study in college or do in the future for a job or career. So lots of great ones to try and explore. And there's lots of other tabs here. You will see there's applying to college. So when you become a senior and you're looking to start applying to colleges, this is gonna be a great reference tool. When you start signing up to take the SAT and ACT, scholarships and financial aid, again, not till senior year, if you're thinking you might eventually want to be an NCAA athlete, we've got lots of information for you posted and so on. There's so much information provided for you here on the counseling website. Please take advantage of it. Next, I want to talk about rank and GPA. Westwood is a non-ranking high school. Legally, we have to rank the top 10% of students for the state of Texas, but that's it. Twice a year, we publish rank during what we call rank week. We've already had this one in August, but the next one will be in January. This is where if you're not in the top 10%, you can find out your standing purely for motivational reasons. Some students like to know where they're at and check it every semester to see if they've made progress and are improving. It's just a, a great tool for some students to kind of track their progress. However, most students don't ever check it and that's completely fine. GPA is what's gonna matter when you apply to colleges. So we have two GPAs. There's a 5.0 and the 4.0. So I wanna kinda of go through them and tell you what their purpose is and why you would use them. So first, we're gonna start with the 5.0. This is gonna be the most common one you will hear people reference. This is what colleges will look at. The 5.0 GPA, which our rank for the top 10% is based off, it's weighted and only includes core classes in foreign language. So when we say weighted, what does that mean? Okay, here's a great example. If a student makes a 100 in an on-level class, they're gonna earn five points. So five is perfect. If they make 90s, it's gonna be four points and so on. If a student takes an advanced level class and it doesn't matter if it's advanced, AP, IV, TAG, they're all the same. 
when it comes to doing GPA, they can earn up to six points on that scale. So they can have six points for 100, five points for 90, and so on. So it's a 10 point boost. So this is my great example. If you take all on level classes and make 100 in all of them, the perfect GPA would be a 5.0 on the 5.0 scale. If you take all advanced level classes and make a 100 in all of them, the perfect GPA would be a 6.0 on the 5.0 scale. So it's still a 5.0 scale. You can just go above perfect on that. So if you click down here on the 5.0 GPA, this tool is going to pop up. If you download it, you can make it look the right direction, which I've already done. This is our 5.0 GPA explanation scale. So this kind of lets you see how the 10 point boost works. So again, that 5.0 is technically perfect. 100 in an on level, it's a 90 in an advanced course over here. So this little tool down here can help you figure out your GPA. So I wanna go through a couple. So for example, if you're in on level world geography and you make a 95, you would go to the on level column, go to the 95, you will see it's worth 4.5 points. Algebra 1, if you make an 87 and on level, you would go to the 87, you will see it's worth 3.7 points. Advanced Biology, a 92. So you'd go up to the 92 in the advanced column, you will see it's worth 5.2. Advanced English 1, a 99. Go to the advanced column, 99 is 5.9 points. Advanced Spanish 2, an 87, you will see it's 4.7 points. You add up all those numbers, divide it by the amount of classes, and you have your total GPA of 4.8. Some students are like, well, if I get a 10 point boost, shouldn't I take all my courses at the advanced level? Well, here's the thing. In theory, that sounds great. But if you take five advanced level courses, that is a lot of homework. Most people do not have within the 24 hours enough time to complete five advanced courses. We as a Westwood staff do not recommend that for anybody. It's too much. And honestly, what ends up happening is you don't have enough time to study. You don't have enough time to focus and get everything done at the highest quality you would want without sacrificing sleep or other activities. So usually your grades will start going down. You might have some Bs, you might have some Cs. And then honestly, the 10 point difference is not really worth it. So for example, in this picture, if you look at the advanced Spanish 2 and 87, that's right here. You probably put in a couple extra hours a week to earn that 87 versus if maybe if you'd done the on level, you could have made that 97 with less time and energy and maybe put more time towards your other advanced classes. So it's all about balance and finding the correct level of work to challenge yourself versus not overwhelming yourself too much. You've really got to look at balance for your schedule and for you. And you can't base it off how it is for somebody else. It's got to be a personal decision for each student. So please, when picking your courses, which we'll talk about later, we've got to find balance. 4.0. So what is this other GPA? The 4.0 GPA is unweighted. So unweighted means it doesn't matter if it's an advanced course like AP Calculus or PE, they're all going to get the same points. So on a 4.0 scale, 100 in AP Calculus receives the same GPA points as 100 in PE. The other thing about this scale is 100 and 90 receive the same amount of points. They're both A's. So if you click on the 4.0 GPA handout to download, this will come up. So you will see whether you make a 100 or a 90, you get four points. Whether you make an 89, an 85, or an 80, you get three points. So that's why the 4.0 GPA scale is not used very often. Sometimes a college might ask for it, or scholarship, or NCAA, but that's it. This is not gonna be what we use mainly. Next, I wanna talk about endorsements versus academies. And I'm sure you've been hearing these words since eighth grade, if not even sooner. So an academy is going to be optional versus endorsement is required. What the differences are, an academy is a three to four sequence of courses. So usually an elective. So if you're somebody who likes engineering and take 
three to four years of engineering, you're going to be on the academy strand. If you complete these pathways of these elective, you can earn a colored stole to wear at graduation. So a little bit of bling. Again, these are not required to graduate high school. If you click on the link, you will see based off the area of interest of the elective, what the pathway would look like for your four years of high school. So this is a great tool to access. Versus an endorsement. An endorsement is required to graduate. Graduate. Everybody must have at least one. Some people will ask me, well, should I try to get five endorsements or just one endorsement? Doesn't matter. Absolutely not. Colleges don't care. Colleges want to see that you have one because if not, you won't graduate. So they're just going to make sure you're graduating. So here's the thing. There are multiple different ways to get an endorsement. There's multidisciplinary, there's business and industry, public service, STEM, and arts and humanities. Most students will get the multidisciplinary by default. Multidisciplinary means you took your four core classes all four years, which everybody should be doing. So everybody in theory should get the multidisciplinary endorsement. So let me go ahead and click on this link to show you. Endorsements. They can be elective based or they can be academic based. And I kind of want to explain that just to give you an idea. So the STEM endorsement. If you complete the four years of computer science or four years of engineering, you're going to get the STEM Academy. So the sash to wear at graduation, but you're also going to get a STEM endorsement. But if you see down here, if you have five math credits or five science credits, you're also going to get a STEM endorsement. Even though you didn't take these electives, you will get a STEM endorsement for taking above and beyond the math or science requirements. However, those are just endorsements. Since they are not in this gray box, they do not earn the academy. So you won't actually wear a colored stole for that endorsement if you take five math credits. You won't get the stole, the colored stole to wear at graduation, but you will get the STEM endorsement, which is required which one endorsement is required for graduation. So it can be a little tricky. I recommend that you download this document and use it as a reference tool. This is also included in the course catalog. So again, lots of good information on our counseling website. STAR test. So at the high school level, students must take five EOCs. So there is an Algebra 1, an English 1, an English 2, Biology, and U.S. History. If you are a student who took Algebra 1 in middle school, you've probably already taken the Algebra 1 EOC and you've met that requirement. English 1 and Biology are going to be also done in ninth grade year. English 2 will be done in 10th grade and U.S. History will be taken in 11th grade. So senior year, you should have no EOC test left to take. So I kind of want to start the the thought process of picking courses for next year. We won't do this to the spring, but I think right now, while your courses, you know, this is your first year at Westwood, you're getting used to the workload and the balance. This is a good time to start talking about what you would be taking for next year. Again, you're not picking it right now. This is just to get your mind thinking, have a good discussion between you and your parents to start thinking, what would I wanna take next year? So kind of just real basic to begin with, everybody's got to take these 27 courses to graduate high school. So everybody's going to take four English, four math, four social studies, and four science before they graduate. You've also got to take two language credits, a fine art, a PE, and then seven other classes, so seven other electives. So I want to go through these in detail. So for English, as a ninth grader, this year means you're taking either English 1 or Advanced English 1. So the conversation I want you and your parents to be having is, how is my English class going this year? Is it too easy? Is it too hard? Could I handle more? Or this, with everything else, it's taking too much of my time. You know, you've got to have that honest dialogue with you and your parents. What can you handle? And what do you want to make a priority? You know, if you're somebody who thinks you might want to go to college for medicine, you might want to make, take your math and science classes all advanced, and maybe your English and social studies you do on level. So you can focus and get your grades as high as you can in the math and science courses. So 
you it's really an individual decision for you. So if you're in on level English one and it's perfect for you, you're going to sign up for on level English two. If you're in advanced English one and advanced English and it's perfect for you, you're going to go to advanced English two. If you're in advanced English one and it's taking up all your time and that's all you have time to do and it's just too much next year, we would maybe want to switch to English two. So that's what I'm saying. This is your point to start kind of thinking about and just starting to be cognitive as this semester goes on. Is this what I want to be doing next year or do I want to maybe take a little bit off or add a little bit more on? Same thing for math. You're going to find where you're at in ninth grade. What class are you in? And then you move over to the 10th grade column and that'll tell you what you're going to sign up for 10th grade year. This is going to be the pathway for non-IB students. You will see things accumulate with AP or on-level options. If you're thinking you're going to be going IB, this is going to be your IB math pathways. So again, you'd look for your ninth grade year, what class are you in, and then move to the 10th grade year to see what would you be taking. Social studies. So you would look at your ninth grade year again, then go to the 10th grade column. And again, this is where I would say you might want to start thinking, okay, how is my ninth grade year going? Is it going great? Do I want to stay at the same level for next year or do I maybe want to adjust? Do I want to go up? Do I want to go down? So something to think about. Science. You're going to look at your ninth grade course selection, where you're at right now, to the 10th grade option. So you've got three options for this. There's IPC, chemistry, and advanced chemistry. Students sometimes ask, well, why would I take IPC over one of the chemistry? If math is a struggle for you, it's not your easiest subject, I always say go the IPC route. Um, I think it's a really great to help you build up your math skills before you head on to chemistry maybe in 11th grade. But again, think about the level you're in right now as a science in ninth grade and decide, should I go advanced? Should I go on level? You know, what is it like this year? Can I handle that advanced workload? Can, should I stick with on level? Should I adjust? Really think about it. So for languages, everybody must take two years of the same language. So level one and level two. Again, in middle school, you might have taken a level 1A and a level 1B, and that earned you your first year of a language credit. But everybody's got to take two years. Here's the thing. Students always ask, well, should I go past the two-year mark? Because Westwood offers up to level five, level six in most languages. Should I keep going? What's the benefits? I always tell students, if language is a, a strong subject for you, you should go through year four. And the reason why, if you go through the AP level four and you pass the AP test at the end of the year, you'll earn your college language credit. And then you will not have to pay in college to take a language at the college level. So you can get it done with while you're in high school and you're going to have so much more access to your teachers here than you would in college. So something to think about. Next is fine art and PE. Everybody's got to have one year of fine arts and one year of PE. And there are lots of options for both. The one thing I want to draw attention to is band and dance. If you are in band for two years, you will earn your fine art credit, you will earn your PE credit, and two other elective credits. So if you can commit to BAN for two years, you will earn your full year of fine art, your full year of PE, and two elective credits for your two years of BAN. So it's a good deal. Dance is another great option. If you take dance for one year, you earn not only your full fine art credit, but one PE credit as well. So you earn two credits for one class. So that's kind of a really great, you know, bang for your buck there. So you might want to think about taking a dance class. So academies. So Westwood, as I was talking about earlier, offers those academy elective options. So again, if you take the three to four year pathway, you can earn a stole, so that's sash to wear at graduation. So kind of to show you what it is, so the ninth grade column, so you might already have picked that you're in journalism. And so this year as a ninth grader, you're sitting in journalism one. Well, if you look under the 10th grade column, that would tell you what you would take as your 10th grade year and so on. 
So on the next few slides, I've listed on the left all the different elective pathways we option, offer and then the sequence for a ninth through 12th grade year. So this is what that chart had. It's just much bigger and hopefully a little easier to read. So again, the great thing about this presentation, you can pause it to look at this more in detail and at a slower pace, but you can kind of see, again, here is another great example. So art drawing. So art one, then you'd go to art two drawing one, art three drawing two, art four AP drawing. You just work your way from left to right. So lots and lots of different options for your next four years at Westwood. And the great thing is, is if you took something and you didn't like it this year, you can start a different pathway next year as a 10th grader. So definitely there's flexibility because again, remember, an academy is not required for a graduation, just an endorsement is. Okay, so other resources. The course catalog will have full descriptions and the Westwood Virtual Choice Sheet, which I showed you already on the counseling website is here. So please, please, please use this reference tool. This is gonna be so important for you in finding out what courses are like. And I've already kind of talked about it once that you wanna make sure your schedule is balanced. So this is what I always tell a student to do. I say, when you're thinking about your classes for next year, I want you to tell me what are the four, gonna be your four most challenging ones. Okay, once you have that in your mind, okay, these are gonna be my four most challenging courses on my schedule next year. Imagine they're all on Orange Day. Could you make it through an Orange Day with your four most challenging courses? If the answer is no, it would be way too much, then that schedule is too difficult for you. Because here's the thing, when we make your schedule every year, there is a good chance that your four most challenging courses could be on one day and there's nothing we can do about it. So you need to really in your mind, this is the greatest exercise tool. Pick your four classes that you're most challenging and then think to yourself, could I do these four classes back to back on an orange day? If the answer is no, then you need to adjust something in your schedule. That's too much. You should be able to do them all in one day. And if the answer is no, I really would recommend you might wanna think about adjusting your course schedule for next year. The most important thing at this point I wanna talk about is your resume. All students, when they apply to college, will need a high school resume. So, I want to kind of go over what a high school resume looks like and kind of show you what you need to be doing at this point in time so you're not as a senior trying to play catch up. So if you click on the resume sample, this is going to pop up. Make sure you download it so the formatting is correct. I've already pre-done this, so I'm going to pull this up right here for us. And the nice thing is about this, you can download this and save it and then go ahead and start typing your information over it. So this is what colleges are going to want to see. They're going to want to see your contact information, where you go to school, and your data over here. So test scores, GPA, they're going to want to see all of that. They're going to want to see what did you take in high school? What were your academic courses? Just real quickly, right there for them to see. The next thing they're going to want to know is what extracurricular activities were you involved with from ninth grade on? So students always ask, well, I did this in middle school. Can I put this on there? Nope. It's ninth grade on. So this August, moving forward. So any clubs you're involved with, you're going to put this on here. I made this up, so my descriptions are kind of short. Your descriptions can be much longer. This is where you want to tell a college what were you doing within that activity. And these extracurricular activities can be Westwood or they can be things you do outside of school. They do not have to be Westwood related. The next section is leadership positions. So leadership you've taken on over your four years at Westwood. Then we'll go into awards and honors, different things you have been bestowed over your four years. Again, all of this can be Westwood or non-Westwood things. Summer activities, what did you do in your summers? They wanna know you kept busy. Maybe you took a college class. Maybe you went to camp, did some volunteering. They wanna know you're doing stuff besides just sitting at home playing video games or watching Netflix. They, they wanna know what you're doing with your time. Volunteer work, so community service. What, what are you doing to give back to your community? And this is a really important one because you're gonna see senior year, a lot of scholarships are gonna be based off of volunteer. So you definitely wanna get involved. 
And the last section is work experience. And you'll see I kind of put two ends of the spectrum. There's pet sitting. Um, and then there's like working at like a restaurant. Both of those are jobs. Jobs show colleges that you're dependable, that you can show up on time, people trust you, um, you're responsible. So that's what a job shows somebody. So again, it doesn't need to be a real job where you're going into a place, you're doing, taking taxes out. It can be purely pet sitting, babysitting, maybe mowing, mowing the neighbor's yard. That's all fine. But you need to keep up with this because here's the thing. The four years of high school are going to go by so fast. And as a senior, if you start your resume, then you're going to have so much problems coming up with everything you've done over the four years. If you're thinking, I don't have any clubs on my on my resume yet. Again, it's just ninth grade. We've only been in here for two months. There's a club website for Westwood that you can get involved with and join. If you're needing volunteer activities, there's some really great options here as well that you can explore. The thing is, this is four years. This shows four years of high school. So you don't have to have everything filled out right now. I expect a lot of those sections to be blank, but I want you in the back of your mind know you've got all these different sections of the resume that need to get filled up over four years. So just consciously in your, in your mind be thinking, I do need to get involved. I need, do need to be active. And over the next four years, you're gonna naturally fill this in, but you just need to keep up with it. So this, this is my great little resource tool to help you stay motivated, to be involved, and maybe step up for some leadership as you can. Just some final reminders that are good for anybody is don't procrastinate. Time can get away with us, whether we're in virtual or in person, we need to stay on top of our stuff. Remember ninth grade does count. So many times I meet with seniors and they're like, oh, I wish I knew in ninth grade that this all matters, that my grades matter, that what I'm doing counts. I feel like I've been making up for my ninth grade year for the last three. So ninth grade does count. Take your grades seriously. Get involved. All of this year is so important. Make sure you're checking your grades in Hack daily. If you see something missing or a grade doesn't look right, you thought you had a different grade, email your teacher right away. Don't let it go a couple weeks. Stay on top of it. You need to be checking your student email multiple times every day. This is just a good habit. You can ask your parents. I'm sure they check their work email nonstop all day. Same thing for your student email. School is your job. You should be checking your email multiple times every day. And the last thing is take advantage of what your teachers offer you and ask for help. If their tutorial times are posted, go to tutorials if you need help. Don't be embarrassed. Get the help you need so you can be the best you. The other thing I would say is always do your homework the day it's assigned. That way you have time to get help before it's due. You stay on top of it. We just want you to be the best you possible. And we know being virtual or in person, whatever, you can easily get unorganized, forget something. So just get a calendar, get a planner, something, write down your, your to-dos and make sure you're checking them off in a timely manner. We can't wait to see what your next four years of Westwood are going to be look like. And I know this was a lot of information, but it, again, it's great that this is a video. You can watch it over and over. You can pause it, take notes. Talk about it with your family because, again, remember, everything is going to be an individual decision for you and your parents. So have a great freshman year.